battle over reopening schools continued this week with an alliance of teachers unions and progressive groups sponsoring what they called a national day of resistance around the country and listing their demands before they'll return to the classroom. They include canceling rents and mortgages, a freeze on evictions and foreclosures, and a moratorium on standardized testing and new charter or voucher programs. These unions also lobbying their political allies in the states to keep private schools closed in the fall if public schools do not open. Let's bring in Jeannie Allen. She's the founder and CEO of the Center for Education Reform. Welcome, uh, Jeannie. Nice to see you. So uh, uh, where do we stand on the, uh, just take a look, big picture for a second. Where do we stand on the state of school openings? Are most going to open this fall? You know, most are not opening in person. Um, almost all are open remotely, although there's lots of different variations of that definition. Paul, the teachers' unions have ruined what is typically a really awesome time for parents, teachers, and students to go back to school because there's no shortage of innovation available, and there are schools and networks and organizations opening, but they don't tend to be the schools that are in the control of the teachers unions and so Boston Teachers Association, Massachusetts Education Association, California, New York, you name it, are putting the kibosh on on time openings, even online, and of course on in person. And it's just a tragedy. Well, so why do the why do the unions have such a leverage? Is it is it because obviously if the school districts order the and the politicians order the schools to open, they in the in class they can open. Is it because the unions have so much political clout with the with the government or is it the threat of strikes? I, I think it's both. I think it's the clout, it's the threat of strikes. And look, we shouldn't demand that every school open necessarily in person. That's not what any of us want. What we want is school to happen. And school can happen in a hybrid variety of ways, right? So there are institutions, like a lot of charter networks, that are opening their doors in person and offering teachers and parents the option of virtual online remote education. And so what we want is flexibility, flexibility for districts, flexibility for schools, private, public. We don't want to tell anyone they can't do something, but we have to start school. And so the fact of the matter is school is starting on time for an awful lot of students around the country, most of them online or remotely where they are opening. But for those that are controlled by these institutions, these militant organizations, as I've said, they're not opening at all, and they're not even sure they can open because they've done nothing to prepare. And so who's doing it better? Those that have flexibility and freedom, which are exactly the ones the teachers' unions are demanding, get shut down or prohibited from growing. Now, are you confident that, uh, uh, that you can actually open schools safely, that there's enough knowledge and awareness and preparation of how to do it safely? Uh, and what would that involve? I, I am confident of that with a lot of caveats, right? And so we've seen schools have plans that um, they're reducing, they're, they're basically splitting school into blocks. So okay. every three weeks, there'll be a cohort of students in school, a smaller cohort, when everybody else is online. Um, we're seeing schools in Florida, for example, Charter Schools USA schools saying we're going to open some in person and everybody else can watch from home, right, and follow along. And then, of course, online education has never been, um, it's not actually a strange thing. We've been doing it for 20 years. It can be done well. And people may opt for that. It's not that that's, that's inferior. Um, but I think that with the proper spacing, obviously safety, we see principals actually scrubbing and making sure people are scrubbing their own schools. There are new air purifiers. There are people who can do outdoors all over the country for the next couple of months, barring bad weather. And so when we allow people to be creative, um, create their own options, uh, we see success. And listen, Paul, the other thing we've got to remember is parents out there are not only outraged, they're seeing for the first time the deficiencies in traditional public education. They're, they want to create their own community groups, and we should let them and give them the money to do it. So whether it's called pods or micro schools, where they go in and out of a different school, this is precisely what we should be seeing and advancing in this day and age. It should be exciting, not awful. Jeannie, just briefly, are we seeing a surge in, in enrollment in those kinds of schools uh, in different parts of the country? 
Yeah, we estimate it's between 15 and 20 percent uh, increase in applications um, of private charter. I just heard from online providers just yesterday, 80 percent increase in applications. And we have got to let that money flow with parents so that they can actually take advantage of those options. Well, and how would that happen? How would you and how would that money flow? I mean, the president has talked about that. I think that uh, Secretary DeVos, Betsy DeVos, the education secretary, has talked about that. But would that require an act of Congress or can, can different states have the flexibility to do that? Well, there's two ways to do it. One is with the congressional funding that was distributed both to the CARES Act, by the way, which only 2% has been spent, and with new money coming down the line, governors should be able to distribute those in micro grants. That's extra money, of course. But the other way to do it is we've already waived. States have, allow, have, have allowed themselves to waive laws regarding accountability and, alt, and, and seat time, which is what keeps people in traditional schools, right, having to be in a seat, certain amounts of teachers. All that stuff is gone. Why can't we waive attendance zones for this emergency? Let's waive attendance zones. Yeah, that's uh, that's a, an excellent idea. Thank you, Jeannie Allen.